tale with implications for our own planet, a message that has never been more timely. Cameron's depiction of the planet Pandora and the corruption that threatens to destroy it is an amazing movie-going experience that also advocates for environmental responsibility. The brilliance of the movie was that the solid environmental message was wrapped up in a highly entertaining experience. How many of you seen Avatar? <laughs> All right, that's why it's the highest grossing movie of all time. There you go. Uh, like so many of the great lessons throughout history, it simply told a story that everyone could relate to. We applaud Mr. Cameron for his bold vision, a beautiful film, and awakening the environmentalists in us all. But Mr. Cameron doesn't just make great films about the environment. He also lives an eco-friendly lifestyle and is a champion for indigenous people. He and his wife do their best to live in an environmentally responsible way. Solar and wind energy power that empower his Santa Barbara home. And he and his wife drive hybrid vehicles and do their own organic gardening. On top of all that, Mr. Cameron has become an outspoken ally against environmental destruction endangering indigenous groups around the world. We'd like to thank Mr. Cameron for this inspiring film and for his leadership. And hopefully in the end, we will all feel more connected, more engaged, and free to make the best choices for us and for future generations. Mr. Cameron, come on up. I'd like to present to you with the Environmental Hero Award, and thank you for all the work you've done. Thank you. A, my wife Susie and I have had a place here in Santa Barbara for, I guess, 12 years now. And, uh, you know, it's interesting that our... our I, I feel like my, you know, kind of destiny is kind of linked to Santa Barbara because when I was a kid going to school in in, uh, in Canada high school, uh, I remember the first Earth Day so clearly, and I remember the uh, Time magazine cover with the dead seabirds in in uh, in the oil, you know, from the oil spill. What an impact that had on me, and I promptly wrote a school play called the extinction syndrome about how we were polluting the world and it was anti-war and it was you know it was pretty sophomoric high school kind of rant but then I ultimately wound up doing my slightly less sophomoric uh, uh, you know epic science fiction film on the same subject many years later so it all connects but uh, uh, these issues have been on my mind for a long time since I was a kid and in uh, 95 I wrote Avatar. I thought, you know, what the heck? Quit making these pessimistic movies like Terminator about nuclear war and Titanic, which is a big metaphor for the end of the world. You know, let's uh, let's let's do something that's about the beauty of nature that connects the audience to the glory of nature. And, you know, I could have made a documentary film about the rainforest and and you know probably about one one thousandth of the people that went to see Avatar would have showed up and. You know, they would have already been convinced I'd have been preaching to the choir. You know, I mean, we all we all know this is important. That's why we're all standing here out in the hot sun talking about this stuff. For me, I'm in the shade, see? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the point of Avatar was to use the visual effects, use the 3D, uh, use the spectacle and the action and all that to draw people into the theater. And then, you know, touch them in the heart, make them think about these things. Maybe, you know, and on both sides of the... Of the uh, of the Democrat Republican divide, you know, Republicans hate to admit that they like this movie, uh, <laughs> and if their criticisms of it were in any way accurate, we would not have made the money that we made. Believe me, you know, we outperformed Titanic by almost a billion dollars. So I think it's safe to say that this film worked for people. It worked in their hearts. You know, I, we were at, we were at uh, uh, Brooklyn Tech which is a high school in Brooklyn that, that's... Uh, all right, we've got an alum here. We were there yesterday, Susie and I. There's Susie right out there with Charlie Eckberg, who's a big local activist leader. And, you know, my better half. And uh, Susie, my better half, not Charlie. So, Charlie's my conscience. He's been working on my conscience for about 10 years now. Anyway, we were at Brooklyn Tech yesterday, and we were there talking to a big group of kids, very, very bright kids who really got it, really understood what needed to be done, what the problems were. And in the Q&A, this girl came up to the microphone and she said, 
we all know that saving the environment is important. So why aren't we doing? Why aren't we doing something? Why aren't we doing more? What is the disconnect? Is freedom important? Yeah. Is it worth dying for? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. We don't have freedom if we don't know what's going on. We therefore can't vote in any responsible way if we are not science literate. The problems of this century, it's not like there's going to be a Pearl Harbor and a bunch of bombers are going to go overhead to tell us that, the, that the, you know, we've got a fight on our hands. We have to believe the scientists who are telling us that we've got a fight on our hands. And it's a fight that's as dire as what this nation went through in World War II, what this nation went through in, in the Civil War. And we need the kind of leadership that we have at those two great crises in our history. Now, we, Susie and I were, were in, in Washington. We just came back from... And the Zoom. thing that, that we've got to do as eco-warriors here, because I'm assuming that, you know, all y'all here are, are into it, you've done it, you know, what's, you know what, what's happening. But what we, what we have to do as eco-warriors, we've got to go out there and be warriors. I'm not saying, you know, conk somebody over the head. I'm saying get up in their face if they're a denier and, and confront them. Confront them with the idea that, that your children have to live in the world they're creating. My children have to live in... My children are important to me and I'm going to fight for them, so I'm going to fight you on this issue. You know? And the, and, the, and the question everybody, every living human being on this planet needs to ask themselves, everybody here and in, in your confrontational discussions, you can use this, what kind of ancestor do you want to be? Alright, thank you. I've talked enough. It's hot out there. Thank you. Let's hear it for Dean Kevin! Hello, friend. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. April 22nd is Earth Day, and we are having annual Santa Barbara Earth Day Festival to enjoy, celebrate, and appreciate this beautiful planet, Mother Earth. Let's contribute our time and energy in our own ways to help make this world a better place. Think globally and act locally. Thank you for watching my video, and have a wonderful day to you all.